This is Top Landing Gear. And welcome to Top Landing Gear. And as we approach winter, what more appropriate and rather jolly topic to pick than the Cold War? Uh, the reason for this rather bleak sounding subject is because our guest is someone who we were originally going to talk to about his part in the 1969 Daily Mail air race, but who then sent me his book, Rhapsody in Blue, all about an RAF fighter pilot's life during the Cold War. Well, this rather changed things because during his time as a pilot, he's flown just about every fighter jet imaginable. He's retired Air Vice Marshal Graham Williams and will be rather nervously standing to attention a little later. In, in the meantime, we will, of course, have all our regular features, Ask James, Jez's Quick Facts, and, of course, the often highly contentious Top Landing Gear quiz all about the Cold War. So that's going to be a laugh, isn't it? I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so first, a quick introduction to the Top Landing Gear Cold War team. It may be cold outside, but warming us up nicely in his superbly insulated recording studio, pop superstar from Scouting for Girls, Roy Stride. Hello, hello. Hello, Roy. <laughs> Now, most of you will have heard, I'm sure, of the American footballer William Perry, a.k.a. The Refrigerator, because of his colossal size and weight. Which one are you going to do? So, which one is it going to be? <laughs> well, it's obviously you. <laughs> Let's go with um, wide-bodied pilot James oh. Garner. Hello, hello. Jim. Hello. Hey, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he puts a titanic effort into his quick facts. He is the veritable iceberg, not much up top, and a surprising amount of bulk underneath. Uh, <laughs> agricultural fencer, Jess Curling. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Don't stand for that. You're bigger than I'm, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying hello, everyone. <laughs> and the epitome of cool, me, uh, Rob Curling. <laughs> hello, everybody. Who everyone sounds this? really enthusiastic. <laughs> no, we are. You just, uh, just slagged like two of us off. Well, not really. No, it's just... Anyway, carry on. Well, it's good to see everyone uh, again. And mm. have you all been, uh, James? Any flying for you? Uh, been f fairly nil on the nil point on the on the, <laughs> on the flying front. Apparently, I have a simulator coming up because I need to do some recency. You've only just done a simulator. Well, you have to do it every forty-five days because I haven't done three landings in forty-five. So yeah, right. I'm back in the sim in a couple of weeks, and then I've got a couple of trips. One on Christmas Day, one on New Year's oh, Day. Yeah. yeah. Really, so you're really uh, bad obviously you lucky. You. <laughs> <laughs> they love me. They do. And as, and as a member of your family. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they requested that, didn't they? they? <laughs> <laughs> Jez, what about you? Oh, the same old, same old. Uh, fencing. Yeah. Uh, more fencing. Yeah. Bit of digger driving. Nice. That's it. Lovely. Roy? Any composing, any performing? A little bit. Any a little new bit. songs? A few new songs. Got a new album about oh. to, to come out and some live dates announcing very soon. Oh, wow. Will they be announced by the time this comes out? Maybe not. Maybe this is the ultimate spoiler. But, uh, so, what, Scouting for Girls in 2021? Yes. Yeah. Could be busy. At Could all. be busy for us. Yeah, maybe. Ooh, maybe. Can't say. But, uh, well, don't forget uh, to tell them you've got a, a, a bloody podcast I know. to uh, produce. <laughs> I know. And I've got... I'm, I, I had... I think I sent you guys a message on the WhatsApp that uh, I booked in because I have all my flying got cancelled due to various weather. For your Microsoft weather, PPL. For my Microsoft. My Microsoft <laughs> Sorry, <PPL>. your Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's all coming out now. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I, it's just a flight sim. Uh, but I've now, my uh, uh, instructor came back with loads of dates, which if I do. All of them, if I manage to do all of them, I may even be solo by before no. Christmas. So, well, we'll Christmas have, this have year. There. This year. You cannot yes. go solo no. without us being there. We have oh, to okay. be there. Okay. Yeah, no, that's true, actually. Yeah. That mm. could be quite. I, I need to pass my air law exam. So that's uh, what I'll be up to. That's yeah. incredibly exciting. Yeah. And I think just for once, I'm going to ask you what you've what's happened to you. What have you been. Yeah, there's some massive yes, news. Some big massive thing yes. happened this week. Fame Come on, man. Come on. Tell us. I was just sitting at home, television was on. <clears throat> I was actually watching the news. But no, there was a. I I mentioned it ages ago that I did a a recording for a drama, a big mm -hmm. drama, and you couldn't tell us. I couldn't tell you what it was, but it's the Crown. 
and that's just started. Episode one, and I'm, I'm a show the king. Jump, I, <laughs> the king. <laughs> I'm I'm actually Princess Diana's body double. Um, yeah, in her early days, and uh, before she put on all that weight. <laughs> <laughs> now, I play the part of an equestrian commentator, which I actually have done in real life. So that's not but, playing a part, is it? That's just well, being Rob Curling. You see, I can't mm. really act, so I can only play myself. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, so the Crown, that's yeah. the number one show. I yeah. know, so I'm in the realising. World. In the I, world. I do, yeah. I'm rather getting the idea of this because I'd never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Rather now, I rather wish I had, because I'm now slowly working my way through series one, which is absolutely brilliant. Isn't it? Every episode is like a feature film, yeah. and in fact, filming this, it really was shot like a feature film. And yeah. The amount of people we were second unit, and the amount of people on our unit was just colossal. I didn't know which one was the the director because there were so many directors. Mm. Everyone's got a you know it seems to have a. I mean, I've worked in television for donkey's years. And where BBC was always castigated for the amount of people they'd have on, on set. But I mean, and I've, I have done feature films before, but nothing to this scale. And it isn't a feature film, it's, oh, it's a yeah. TV show. Mm. But yeah, it's, a, it's, days, a, it's yeah. major. Uh, yeah, very were, good. Were there, well done. Were there, <laughs> were there any aircraft in it? Not in this particular. No, not interested. Not not interested. <laughs> Let's move on. Come on. <laughs> but isn't there not. A, somebody said there's something about Prince Charles flying in a buccaneer in one of the episodes. Oh, now, this may good. or may not be made up in my head, but I'm sure I read somewhere about Prince Charles flying in a buccaneer in the crowd. Well, well we should get him enough, off. <laughs> you should get him <laughs> off. There was, well, I've got inroads now. Um, there was, funny enough, a picture on Twitter of him sitting in a buccaneer maybe on, on the deck of the Art Royal, I think. Right. Maybe, oh. maybe it's all, it's maybe all coming together. Oh, well. <laughs> maybe that could be our next guest. Do you know yeah. what? They could be quite good, a little Royals aviation special. Harry and Will. Harry oh. and Will. Yes, so yeah. Duke of Edinburgh flew a turbulent. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And I believe Prince Charles flew 146 on the island of Islay once. Oh, yes. Didn't get off the end of the runway. Might have done. Mm. Yes, he did. There goes our knighthood. Yeah. <laughs> and our interview. <laughs> yeah. And any more fencing for me ever. <laughs> yeah, there we are. No, part, no further parts for me in the crown. Anyway, never mind. I don't think it was going to happen anyway. James, mm. we should get on to our Ask James topics yes see, this worrying thing is i have no idea what's coming up at all well because have these... there been any questions I or are we back to if, how we used to are... <laughs> if there are questions you lot have been keeping them very quiet <laughs> that's all i'll say well this is a... before we start i'm going to say first of all in the mailbox there has been some mentions uh this is before we get into ask james david Lilly emailed oh, yeah. <clears throat> 1,000 Twitter followers. Good morning. Congratulations on 1,000 followers. I was 1,001 with AJ being number two and you, number two. Yeah. In 2009, he and I were the pilots of the RN Black Cats. Yeah. If you're interested, I'm sure we could be available to do a piece on the Black Cats, Lynx helicopter and flying from ships. Yes, Ding please. That's the yeah. AJ's now the Wildcats, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, so that was in the mailbox. Nice, uh, nice. Our last episode is going to be an Ask James special, which is going to come out in a couple of weeks' time. So we do need questions. And to make it more interesting, we are going to have a prize for the best question. Oh, do, are, going to are be we a, involved? Can we, we are, There's can a we... prize for the best question that comes externally and a prize for the best question from the three of us. Oh, so, maybe I'll keep my question. question. And, and, mm. and what will the prize be? Mm, I'm keeping that secret. At the moment. But it's going to be when a very say... good prize. Like, the prize for... It, the, they're going to be very good prizes. One of the prizes Go on. for the people, uh, for anybody who is mailing in, will be a copy of the books, which we've talked about. Oh, what a oh, good idea. On this series. Idea. What a okay. great Excellent. idea. And some of them have been signed. Not and my copy. Yeah. Not my copy, because mine has scribbles all <laughs> over. Well, all it's your copy, James. Can I just so clarify, when you mine. say the last episode, that's not the last ever episode. <laughs> no, 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 no. The last, uh, next episode, episode. This particular the last episode of yeah. Series 2 yeah. will be the ah, Ask okay. Special. And I think we've also got... Something very special as well. We have. This will be our Christmas special programme yeah. and we will have an interview with the new leader of the Red Arrows, squadron leader Tom Bold. Is that his first I interview? I, I'd like to think so. Probably his best yeah. first interview. Yeah. yeah. Most important. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it will be a really nice, exciting way to see out the, the year, I think. Yeah. I what think a great it's year been. it's been. What a year. What a year. <laughs> 2020. Brilliant. Uh, the history books, that one. Yeah. <laughs> So I've got a question which goes back to The Sims. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is one of your old RF Probably mates. will be. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes you get a question from Ask James and you have no idea what it means. Yeah. Yeah. You just hope James does. Okay. 
I'm loving the podcast and the image of a horse climbing down the stairs of the Empire State Building was hilarious. So oh, nice. Yeah. Jimbo's piece on his sim rides was interesting. Can you ask him what his thoughts are about practicing emergencies in the simulator and the real aircraft where the muscle memory and recovery actions are different? Example, engine off versus full flare recovery in the Puma HC Mark I. <laughs> I think I know where this and is And what about from. initiating a double engine failure in the Puma <laughs> by retarding both throttles? James. <laughs> this is somebody who knows more than they should do. Um, <laughs> let me first by saying that, uh, start by saying that obviously the, um, the way a simulator reacts and the way a real aircraft reacts, while they are very, very similar and good enough for the muscle memory, um, there's always a requirement to do things in the aircraft. What I think our, uh, our question asker here is might be referring to <laughs> yep. is an incident that happened at Abingdon <laughs> over 10 or 12 years ago yeah. when I was uh, – I, I gave a double engine failure to a student of mine when I was, when I was instructing. And you do that by pulling the, the, the throttles back. This is in a Puma. In a Puma helicopter. Right. And the, um, the rotor speed starts to decay, so they have to react – and you have to make sure that they react accordingly in, in, in the real aircraft, which he did a very good job of. Um, and then once he's reacted and you're happy that he's going to make the field, he says, then the idea is to push the throttles forward. So when you ask f for power from the engines at the bottom, they are there to supply the power. At the time when I should have been pushing the throttles forward... <laughs> you were texting. I, was, I wasn't texting. We didn't have text messages back then. Like more than right now. Um, I was distracted by the fact he wasn't going to make his field. And then actually, no, he was. So I was happy. But there was that little period where I thought, oh, he's not going to make this. this is oh, no, no, it's going to work out fine. And then he made it towards the field. And at the bottom bit, where you then put in the power and the, 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 the helicopter climbs away, he pulled in the power and the rotor speed started reducing even more. <laughs> <laughs> which was a a slight thing on the Puma in those days because we didn't have anticipators. So everything started... And you just basically held everything and eventually it caught up. Yeah. Only this time it got worse and worse and worse. And I looked up and saw the, thr the thr throttles still Closed. back, not open. So it was never going to um So that was your away. fault? I think my fault is a very harsh way of putting it. <laughs> Yes, it was my You've fault. You've forgotten to move the throttles. Don't for. forgotten is a, again another harsh word. <laughs> well, I, I love that question. That was well, the... hold on. What happened? So, <laughs> I then went, oh dear. Um, I said, I have control, and then I, which you didn't. <laughs> no, no, I didn't have control. And then I, I did what is an engine off landing at the bottom. So he did all the right stuff, and we cushioned on actually quite softly. <laughs> and I thought. I've got away with this. And then very slowly, it just started oh, no. rolling to the left. Oh, no. And it fell over on its side. The rotor blades Why do pumas keep falling over? James is them. <laughs> <laughs> to wait in balance. They have a, oh. <laughs> I thought this was James, asked, James. I'm, I'm interested, James. <laughs> I'm interested. They have a very narrow yeah. un undercarriage to yeah. the track and the top heavy. Yeah. And at the bottom of an engine off, there is a problem where there is a yaw couple. And if you're on the ground and it tries to yaw and can't, it then converts mm. yaw into roll, and we fell over. Oh. Uh, and the best, well, not the best thing, that one of the, the things that amused me at the bottom of it was, <laughs> was the student, as we got out of the aircraft, luckily everyone was, everyone was fine, we got out. Um, they even used the helicopter again afterwards. Really? Which was quite good. Um, but as we got out, the student came up to me and goes, I'm sorry, sir, I'm really sorry, I'm sorry. And I thought, hmm, I can't get away with this. <laughs> But then I decided to take. I decided to take the bet. I said, didn't "No, I don't think it was anything you did. Didn't I think this one this. might." Be. There was a board. There was a, a little discussion about what I should have done, what I shouldn't have done. About your future. Um, my future was never in doubt. I was always going to leave the air force <laughs> as, as a flight attendant. Yeah. So oh, that is, Jimbo. I think, I yeah. believe, what okay. somebody might be getting at. Thank well you. Done, what was the name of that question? Yeah, who was uh, it? That was from David Gibbs. Well done, David. Thanks, Dave. I love you. <laughs> was David your pupil that day? <laughs> yeah. yes. David was a navigator, which might explain explain some of the things that uh, I said later. Yeah. Well, I, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. and this is probably a question I should know the answer to, but I've never found an explanation for it in oh. anything I've read or seen. Can you explain? What and why, or why and what, is anti-flash white? Okay, so the, the idea is that when a nuke goes off, so we're talking about, I assume you're talking about Vulcans here. Vulcans and, and, and anti-flash yeah. stuff in general. So black absorbs heat, 
white reflects heat. So it's as basic as that. If you're covered in black mm. and a, some, a fire happens, a bomb goes off, whatever, there is a, some sort of heat issue, your clothing will absorb, or whatever, your, the aircraft skin or whatever will absorb that heat if you're, if you're black. If you're white, it will reflect the heat. So all it, it's just a barrier. It's like having a mirror painted. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. I thought it was much more complicated. No. There was, it is purely a reflection so thing. anti-flash clothing that uh, yeah. gunners, naval gunners wore. or, or white, the white, just, yeah, it's just <laughs> reflects Amazing. the white. There's uh, nothing I never more knew that. Right. Well, thank that. you. Maybe they thought it was so obvious there was no need to mm. explain that in the book. Well, they, they also had window blinds, didn't they, in the cockpit? Mm. I mean, is that yeah. basic so that um, aircrew get blinded this was, by the flash? Yeah, thing, I, mean, I think that one of the issues with the... It wasn't the atomic bomb, but the the next one, nuclear. Was it nuclear or the, the, the hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen bomb? And from then on upwards, was that at the blast? You know, a lot of injuries were caused by the the burning of retinas. People oh, looking yeah. at the blast, yeah, and, and burning. And you know, I think even in the Enola Gay, they said they put sunglasses on before they before they dropped the bomb because they were aware that yeah. that was going to happen. Yeah. Okay. And the, the sad thing is, the, the only reason they found out about this is all the Manhattan Project testing. People who were staring at the um, at the bomb going off, were incapable of seeing for a few weeks afterwards. All right, Jimbo, thank you very much for that. Talking about being flash, Jez, you want to have a go at telling us your Cold War quick facts? I'll have a go. Um, let's see how this uh, this pans out. Come on, confidence. OK, OK, OK. The Cold War ran from 1947 until 1991. At the conclusion of World War II, the NATO alliance and the Soviet Union found themselves on either side of the Iron Curtain, the forces of capitalism against communism. The Cold War saw the rapid development of aviation, beginning with concepts such as new wing designs and power plants, and ending with digitalised avionics and stealth technology. All this to gain the upper hand in the event of a hot war. Cold War aircraft included fighters, bombers, anti-submarine warfare helicopters, maritime reconnaissance aircraft, and stealth reconnaissance and bomber types. Uh, the role of fighter aircraft is one of air superiority through the destruction of other enemy fighter aircraft, or in the interceptor role to target enemy bombers. Ground attack aircraft were equipped to strike ground or naval targets. Now, the list of aircraft is almost endless, and I found hundreds and hundreds of Cold War aircraft, so I've just picked a few here. Um, but jet fighters in various roles included the North American F-86 Sabre, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat, the Swedish Saab J-29 Tunan, the Soviet MiG-15 and MiG-25, the English Electric Lightning, the Panavia Tornado, the Harrier, and of course the Hawker Hunter. And this really is just skimming the surface. Strategic and tactical bombers included both prop and jet aircraft. Uh, the Americans had the Convair B-36 Peacemaker and, of course, the B-52 Stratofortress. Uh, the Soviets boasted the Tupolev Tu-160 Blackjack, the Tu-22M Backfire and the Tu-142 uh, Tu Bear. And the Brits, of course, had the mighty Delta-winged V-Force, the Victor, Valiant and Vulcan. Long-range reconnaissance aircraft included the Canberra, PR-3, 7 and 9, the Nimrod, uh, the Boeing E-3 Century and the Aleutian A-50. Uh, and it wasn't all jets. Uh, James, you'll be pleased to hear, the role of helicopters in the Cold War should not be overlooked. Absolutely. Particularly <laughs> in their anti-submarine warfare role. Oh. Uh, the Soviet twin-stack rotored Kamov Ka-25 and the British Westland Wessex and Sea Kings are all well-known examples. Uh, the development of stealth technology, fast speed and high altitude capability led to aircraft like the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird and the Lockheed U-2. Uh, these developments were a reaction to the new propulsion technologies used in rocket or missile-based anti-aircraft defences which made attack and reconnaissance missions very dangerous. And it might be argued that the Cold War gave rise to some of the most interesting aircraft ever designed, many of which never left the drawing board or only got to the prototype stage. However you view it, the rush of technical developments in the Cold War will probably never be matched. And there's your quickish 
hopefully, facts. Very good. I thought you're that getting was really excellent. good at this. Yeah. Very, you've yeah. been practicing, one haven't you? Take. Oh, no. Well, well almost. <laughs> <laughs> It'll sound yeah. like one. So you've always <laughs> spent three days <laughs> editing it. All right, all right. Well all done, right. Jez. Very that was good. Nice, really, actually, no, it's a huge subject, it, isn't it? Is, without making it sound like a huge list. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the Cold War, you know, it's Vietnam is the Cold War. Yes. I mean, it's 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 the Malay 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 emergency. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Yeah. That was Cold War. So I mean, there, well, they, was... they call all these other wars proxy wars mm. because yeah. they kind of fought, they were, it was always communist yeah. against against yeah. capitalism, capitalism yeah. and yeah. it was it was all over the world. Whereas the the main protagonists, the Soviet Union and USA, actually mm. never, thank God, locked horns no. for real. No, I think the proxy war thing is a really good point. And, yeah. and uh, yes, I mean, hence the, the 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 multitude of other aircraft from other countries that yeah. were involved, and of course yeah. those aircraft from the bigger nations were sold on to the smaller nations as well. Well, exactly. Uh, like the Canberra going to Argentina, yes, of course, which yeah. uh, we yeah. talked about in the uh, Falklands episode. Brilliant job, Jez. Well done. Fascinating mm-hmm. stuff. We have a very special guest this week. So shall we move on to hear a clip from him? It's um, the most senior person in terms of rank that we've ever had on the show. So we were a bit nervous when we spoke to him, but he was an absolute joy. He's Air Vice Marshal Graham Williams, twice decorated with the Air Force Cross. He might be best known to many as one of the two Harrier pilots in the 1969 Daily Mail air race. But that was just one chapter in his extraordinarily full life as an RAF frontline pilot and a test pilot, which meant he got to fly an unbelievable mixture of aircraft. He eventually wound up, of course, at the MOD in Whitehall, where his responsibilities included handling the procurement programme for Britain's air defences. So this is just a clip of our interview with Graham Williams. Graham, you you said uh, at the beginning that you thought the whole venture was madness. Did you actually look back on it and thought it was terrific fun? Did you enjoy it? Oh, of course I did. Mm. It was it was the greatest fun. I mean, mm. it, you know, here we are, fifty years later, still talking yeah. about it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Rob doesn't talk uh, about uh, anything else. <laughs> <laughs> He's- I He's just, just upset I you. That Rob doesn't talk about anything else. He's just upset you didn't go to Wisley, oh. where he was at school watching all the other airplanes. <laughs> yeah, and that's very true. Every, everything else came into Wisley, where I was at school, Graham. <laughs> so I saw all the Phantoms and the Victors and the VC tens. But, but Graham, this is just one of your stories of a, a career in aviation, where you've kindly listed your aircraft types flown in the back of the book. It, it's a it's a list as long as your arm of practically every Cold War jet fighter and more besides i'm, I'm going to read them i'm just just Go the jets vampire two versions meteor jet provost hunter every version seahawk <laughs> javelin canberra lightning every version i think sea vixen scimitar short harrier phantom jaguar buccaneer nat hawk and that's just the one aircraft flown as captain jets not including the pistons the helicopters the turboprops it's like Starfighter on the other page. It, incredible. F one eleven, F eighteen, F fifteen. I mean, it's and everything, F- and everything we've just spoken about in terms of the daily air race, which we've dedicated almost a month to. Yeah. <laughs> top landing gear takes well, up it's the smallest story. chapter in this book of yours. It's such an incredible career you had. Amazing. Well, I, I actually count myself privileged to have done it. I, it's not very often that you. Uh, you get to go through life doing a job you absolutely loved, enjoyed, mm. and everything else. And, and there's barely a moment in that whole 37 years, I think it was, that I regret. In fact, I don't think there is a moment I regret. No. It was a wonderful life. And I, that's why I called the book Rhapsody in Blue. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. And the, and the book, I just think, is absolutely true. It's just such a joyful account of not only of the flying, but also of the fun you had <laughs> outside of the flying. We did have a bit of fun. <laughs> Graham, I've not got quite as far, because I'm a very slow reader, not got quite as far through the uh, book as as, I, I'm, <laughs> as the others. But I am just, I think, getting towards uh, the end of your story of your, your three a ship hunter trip down to I can't think where it was now Aiden Aiden uh, and you've you've just discovered that the the civilian pilot taking the uh, the uh, TR9 oh. is an al- <laughs> is an alcoholic 
I, I love this story because not only have you got a, a, a this this poor chap who's obviously got some issues. Not only, I think he also says he hadn't he wasn't very good at formation flying. He yeah. hadn't no he didn't really want to go. He hadn't wasn't familiar with the hunter. Never refueled. <laughs> oh, we've and, heard that before. Uh, yeah, and, yes, and the whole thing was sort of slightly cobbled together. And if there's one thing I've learned since we've been doing this podcast. When you talk about the RAF or British military generally, we're bloody good at just cobbling things together. <laughs> and it all, we, we always, almost always seem to come out smelling of roses. It's incredible. So well done. I love this story. Re- recovery, recovering from the ensuing shambles. Yes. Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's in the same trip where we're talking about cobbling things together. And this is a, like a recurring theme, I think, in the book, is about how often these state-of-the-art jets – are being patched up in <laughs> yeah. the most hotchpotch way. Like I think you're in Karachi, and the air pump falls out of the Hunter. <laughs> no, no, the fuel. Yeah, we lost the fuel pump. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it was it was in this this guy's Navy T8 that, mm. that lost the fuel pump, uh, and of course he did nothing but say, retire to his room and his bottle of scotch. Uh, <laughs> great so great plan Tony, in my book. Tony and, I, <laughs> Tony and I got underneath the aeroplane and, and took the whole thing apart uh, and took the pump out uh, and sent off for a new pump. And I, I couldn't... When I got this package back, I'd got this bloody great thing out of the, of the tank, of the tank, and this fuel pump came back, and it was about a quarter of the size. And I thought, <laughs> bloody hell. Uh, is it the right thing? And when I looked at it, I, we'd taken the base plate off the front tank, off the collector tank. Mm-hmm. We'd taken the base plate off it, which, of course, is something you never do from the time the airplane is built. No. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, now I had no seal. <laughs> uh, so I went and borrowed a, a, a great big tube of, you know, sticky stuff you from... Mm-hmm. Uh, Massive beer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bostick, yeah. Bostick, yeah. Uh, and tighten the money nuts, and put replace the pump, wired it up, tighten nuts up, refueled the airplane, it didn't leak, and we thought, well, hell, you know, it's only it's only the Navy's airplane, so what? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I love it. You, you probably wouldn't do that these days. No, right? you wouldn't. No. I don't think we'd do anything of what we've heard so far in this interview these days. It wouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Graham Williams, and you'll be able to hear his entire unedited interview in our full Flaps edition, which drops a week after this episode goes to air. So depending on when you're listening to this, it may well already be there and waiting for you to hear. And do get hold of his book, Rhapsody in Blue, insight into what life was like in the RAF during a very uncertain era. It's a wonderful read. You love that book, Roy. I loved it. This has been one of my favourite books, which I've read in aviation. It's 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 quite fast paced. It's so interesting. The, the, what I liked about it was, and I was a little bit gushing when we spoke to Graham about <laughs> it. Yeah. I, so I, I've fallen into that trap myself with practically an every guest. But I, it's in parts, it reads a bit like a rock and roll memoir yes. in terms of some of the stuff that he got up to mm. on base. Yes. Not only just to flying in terms of, you know, flying lightnings, harriers, mm. phantoms as a test pilot. But some of the stuff I'm going to read. And also back in the day when like, mortality rates were huge mm. and mm. The, the fact that they used to stick these planes back together. With, <laughs> with, at one point he actually says... Bostick. Yeah. In fact, I've got Bostick link here. <laughs> page 60, I wrote down, this is the fourth time he's nearly died. That's page 60. <laughs> but my favourite bit, which I, I'm going to say, because it kind of summed up everything I loved about this book in terms of how it was written. I'm going to read a bit of it. Do. Okay. Uh, okay. And th- this is a little bit long, but I'm, <laughs> I think it's worth it. Okay. I have several memories of Fassberg, some repeatable and others, which I could well forget. One of those memories was giving a couple of the French pilots trips in the Harrier T2. I flew the first sortie and remained in the cockpit whilst the ground crew strapped the second Frenchman into the back. I was just about to start up when suddenly John McGarvey came rushing up and said there was a problem. It seemed that the air brake, which normally should have been in a mid position with the undercarriage down, had failed to sequence properly and had been fully extended when I landed and had scraped along the runway, damaging the bottom half. But in so doing, it had gone back to the mid position. 
After a quick discussion with John, he decided that he could fix it without delaying the sortie. What he did... I remember very, this. What he did was take a hacksaw <laughs> <laughs> to the damaged part of the air brake with the comment that if the sequences did fail again, it would not hit the runway. <laughs> I have to say that the noise coming from beneath the aircraft as I sat there during the turnaround was horrendous. Basically, he's there with a French pilot in the back. <laughs> Even the French were, were somewhat stunned by this somewhat basic approach to engineering. <laughs> and everyone came out to watch this performance. In fact, the air brake worked normally, and the aircraft flew like that for quite a few weeks. <laughs> the spare air brakes were in short supply. <laughs> so much so that we'd always forgotten about it until one day we had to take the aircraft to Wittering, the erstwhile home of that Harrier. There was a realisation that if someone saw the aircraft like that, they might just be tempted to ground it. <laughs> some artistic work with some duct tape followed, and nobody noticed it. <laughs> Now, this is the same, this continued. I'm not missing anything out. Okay, this is where it goes to next. The guest night was memorable, though I must admit that I did have more than a couple of nervous moments as a senior Allied officer. The French squadron commander insisted on teaching me on how to open a champagne bottle with a sword. Oh. This is literally after the, the Harrier. And as the evening progressed, I became reasonably adept at it. <laughs> How many bottles You've got of to try an awful lot <laughs> <laughs> And he also introduced us to a game which I'd never experienced before and never wished to experience again. The final incident which occurred after the dinner was one which I thought could easily bring my career to a premature close. And I'm going to stop there. Oh. So you have to... Like, it is a great good. It's a written. book on yeah. aviation history. It's yeah. fun. It's really fast-paced. Uh, it's all true. It's yes. all true. And I don't even know if you can get it from Amazon. But you can get it from... You can. You can. Yeah. It's from Amazon, yeah. isn't it? So... Uh, I would, I'd recommend Rhapsody it. in Blue, an yeah, RAF fighter pilot's life during read. the Cold War, uh, and I everything around it. Every, that's the every other stuff. sort of Air Force generation thinks the one beha- before them had all the fun. Yeah, <laughs> I think right? this is proof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, haven't we been lucky the last few weeks? Well, I mean, we've been lucky through all our guests, but the, the last three have been absolute legends. Yeah. Really, have we've been so lucky. Mm. And from, to hear stuff from such a different era, yeah, yeah, you know, from their own, from the horse's mouth. But I think worse, you've hit the nail on the head because I, you always tease me about being so much older than you lot. <laughs> but I'm so lucky because I was alive. I was born right at the end of the 1950s, but through the 1960s when I became interested in aircraft in the 70s, the interesting stuff going on up, up above our heads. It was there was so much stuff going on up there. It was so different, and air shows were thrilling, and you mm. saw so many different things. I still love aeroplanes, of course, but it's it just seems it's a, a bit more clinical now, isn't it? And very clinical, mm. yeah. So you're right, Jira. That that era, fifties, sixties, and seventies in in well, that's what, certainly British aviation. Well, was. that's what kind of why I asked to Graham about if the Cold War was a great time to be flying. Yes, and by which I meant the sheer variety of yes, aircraft, yeah. Yeah. which you know is. You can't get out of your rubbish question now. But he, he, <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a great question. It's insightful. Look, talk, talking about rubbish questions. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. time to move on to the quiz. Oh, yeah. okay. oh, oh come on. Yeah, 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 come on. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's it's the great great top league. landing gear let's Cold it. War yeah. quiz. Yeah. Right. No, I just had to, Everything all right, Jess? Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> Limbering up. Yeah. Good man. I'm going to find right, my first buzzers. question is, has anyone given buzzers any thought at all before coming into the studio? Good, I good, gave good. it quite a bit, of, well, a few minutes worth of thought. All right, James, what have you come up with? I hope this works. When you hear the air attack warning... Okay, that's one of mine. Classy. Oh, Very classy. Well done. Now, that is Barrett, isn't it? Ray Barrett, I think. No, it was, the voice. Um, oh, Patrick Allen. Patrick Allen. Well done. Mm. Well done. That's very good. Right. Well, I had two tribes by <laughs> Frankie Gates Hollywood <laughs> as one of mine, which is why I backed it up with two others. You'd like to hear them both or just one? Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see how good they are. Okay. Here we go. Link. What was oh. about? Nuclear War. Oh, I was it? It was a song about nuclear war, yeah. yeah. I thought it was just about red balloons. Mm. That was a lovely little song about I, balloons. I didn't think you'd get that reference. Well done. <laughs> a bit modern for you, 1982. No, no I know. <laughs> I, I know the song. And uh, if you didn't like that one, you can have no, this one. I loved one. it. Lovely song. Here we go. Oh. That sounds like U2. Ah, oh, U2. Spy plane. 
Is well, it U2? It's a double reference there because it was U2. Oh, well, it is U2. Well on me. And that song was partly written about Leech Walzer. <laughs> Lech Valenza. <laughs> it's not the nine o'clock news. <laughs> Leech Walter. Lech Valenza. So there you go. Which one are you going to use? Well, which one would you like? Uh, well, what does Roy uh, have? The second one, because I didn't get the first one. Or, and, or even um, the second one. Uh, Roy. Uh, I have, it's, it's. Is it any good? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it just uh, a buzzer? <laughs> <laughs> This oh. is the UK nuclear siren. Wow, mm. that's that's eerie. Why do you have to make it sound so horrible? Anyway, if that hasn't cheered you up, then no, nothing. Exactly. This quiz will. Well, the, nah, the quiz will cheer <laughs> everybody. Are you ready? Is everybody yeah. ready? Yeah. Here we go with the top landing gear Cold War quiz. Question one. Great Britain's nuclear strategy revolved around guided missiles such as the Blue Streak and Blue Steel and a strategic bomber force comprising the three great V-bombers, as Jez mentioned in his quick facts, the Valiant, the Vulcan and the Victor. Oh, we were waiting. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you is think it's going to be that there? easy? No. The question is, which one of these was the first to drop an atomic bomb? Someone's going to get a point here. Yes, Roy. The uh, Valiant. The Vickers Valiant is the correct... Mm. Did you know that, or had you just read my answers? I I think I might have known that, but I wasn't... Okay, no, very, very good. It was the Vickers Valiant, which performed a test drop of a blue Danube on Maralinga in South Australia, mainland Australia, Mm. um, in October 1956. That was Valiant B1. Registration, Whiskey Zulu, 366. Well, I'm Roy. Roy takes the lead. Blimey. You say that with some shock. Well, I'm just pleased <laughs> for you. He's got quite shows. a good um, yeah. record in the quiz recently. Actually. Oh, yeah, Roy's done well. Uh, has it helped my sending through the questions to you? In <laughs> yeah, 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 it really good, good, does yeah. Right, okay. question number two. The USA produced a huge number of combat jets which served throughout the Cold War and in Korea and Vietnam. They also produced several pilots who went on to achieve great fame in other fields. One of them flew sabres in the Korean War and is credited with shooting down two MiG-15s. He later became an astronaut on the Apollo mission. Who was it? <laughs> James was just ahead of Jez. Yes, Jimbo? I'm going to go with Buzz. Buzz Aldrin? Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin is the correct yeah. answer. Ah. Well done. On which Apollo mission was he? He was 14, was he? Oh, no, 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 no. 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 Well, 11. 11. 11. Yeah. Second man on the moon behind Do you know, one, one thing which we didn't mention with that whole interview with Graham yeah. was that when Graham won the Hazard, yes. he, uh, he was awarded it for aviation for the Daily Mail Air Race. Yes. And Armstrong and... Buzz, and Buzz. Uh, were awarded it for obviously going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about getting outdone <laughs> in 1969. It was That's a, right. But he um, met them, didn't he? He sat, he, with, he them sat with them. No. He sat next to Neil Armstrong. Yeah. yeah. And Buzz. And he wanted to get Michael Collins, but he left early. Yeah. Mm. Such a shame, isn't it? Oh, but I mean, we not wait to finish this read. Yeah, this it's book. such a, it's a good Yeah, book. I wanted great. to ask him about that, yeah. but there's so much other stuff We're as gonna well. We're going to have to get him back. Yeah, we will. We will. Well Sorry. done. So after the first two questions, Roy has one, James has one. Carrying on the US theme, another US aviator to gain fame in a different career, namely politics, nearly had his chips when he was shot down flying an A-4 Skyhawk in Vietnam and taken prisoner. I haven't asked the question yet, but who was he? Jez, you buzzed in first. It's the first of the President Bushes. It was not the first of the President Bushes. Bad luck. Uh, James, you were next. I'm now going to have to go with... um... The chap who uh, Trump slagged off recently, uh, McCain, anybody. John McCain. The clue in the question was he had his chips. The answer is John oh. McCain. Oh. Well done. Absolutely right. James, you get a second point. Mm. Bad luck, Jess. Unlucky. Well, I was, I was going to say that went before you did. So. Yeah, John McCain no longer with us, from, sadly, but uh, yeah. lost the 2008 election to uh, Barack Obama. Now, one of the longest-serving aircraft to see continued service with the RAF throughout the height of the Cold War and for many years afterwards was the English electric Canberra. It was introduced to replace the wonderful Mosquito, which made its final operational sortie with 81 Squadron on the 15th of September, 1955. Where? 
What what could the answer possibly be? Malaya. Malaya, right? Oh, is that right right answer? Answer? Not absolutely yes. right. A little bit slow. A little bit, bit, slow, a little <laughs> bit slow. You two. <laughs> yeah. Operation <laughs> Fire Dog. The Malayan emergency. The question, and then not press the button. <laughs> well, well, well done, Roy. Joint leader with James after four questions. Jez yet to score. Mm. Okay, film question. One of the most celebrated films about the Cold War was the 1964 comedy Doctor Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, which starred Peter Sellers. In it was a character called Major TJ King Kong based on Alvin Tex Johnson, who flew the first B-54 Stratofortress, the same aircraft that his fictional counterpart flew in the film. Now, Johnson, Tex was a Boeing test pilot, best known for what outlandish piece of flight? Yes, Jez. I, I can only guess that he barrel rolled a 707. Barrel rolled a 707? Uh, James, you were next to Buzz? I was going to say barrel rolled a 707. Barrel rolled a 707. And Roy? No, 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 bus, no, no. <laughs> Well, you're half right, both of you. And if I join the two of you together, it would be a point because he double barrel rolled. Oh, <laughs> a 707. It was actually. I must have known that. I'm, there's no way I would have guessed that. I must have somewhere known that. I knew that. someone did. Yeah, he's saying he was a Boeing test pilot. That was what sort of yeah got it for me. But it I, was actually the prototype, which is called a Dash eighty. But to all intents and purposes, is, purposes, a seven hundred seven. I mean, what I said was actually right. It's absolutely right. Yeah, I'm going to give you a point, Jez. I'm also going to give James a point though, <laughs> because he because <laughs> he, he copied my answer. <laughs> Oh, it's difficult, isn't it? I, mean, I was right going to say that anyway. <laughs> I've been over on no, so you're, so you're you absolutely say. right. Sorry, I've I've lost, I've completely lost control. Uh, Jez, I'm going to give you a point for that. James, unlucky. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't need favours. Don't sulk. I don't need So favors. look, we're going into one <laughs> final question. The scores are James has two, Roy has two, Jez oh. has one. Mm. Now, for once, I haven't prepared any additional questions. Yay. So, Jez, if you... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Do I say that out loud? So, <laughs> Jez, if you answer this correctly, it's going to be a three-way tie. Okay. So, good luck, everybody. Final question. It'll roll on. The English Electric Lightning, which provided sterling RAF service as an interceptor, was never credited with an official kill. However, it did shoot down a Harrier during the Cold War. Why? Yes, Jimbo. It was um, doing a little bit of training with the Harrier, and it didn't. They'd taken a quick reaction alert jet when they weren't expecting to, or, or there'd been a, an unserviceability. So they'd taken an aircraft which was on QRA, and it had live weapons, and they didn't. They forgot that it had live weapons, and they did the old all oh, everything pickled the thing, and, and they were quite surprised when a actual missile left the rail. What off the Lightning? Mm. And shot down the Harrier mm. pilot and everything. No, they they told it to eject. They went eject, eject, and the Harry ejected. It's, well, it's not. It's not right. That's not the story I've got, <laughs> isn't it? Fine. That's it's a, a great it's a story. cracking answer. <laughs> oh, did that happen? Something like that happened. I said, I love that. I think that's brilliant. But it's not what I've got. So who who's next? Yes, let Roy. me take you back to the days of Malaya. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I have no idea. No. no idea. Okay. You, you'd have been wrong. We've had our okay. one and only Malaya answer. Jez, it's up to you. You've got a buzz. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Right. The answer I've got, James, is this. The pilot of the Harrier was forced to eject, mm -hmm. as you said, but the aircraft apparently suffered engine failure. However, the Harrier continued to head ah. for the East German border. I've read this. Unpiloted. Oh, okay. As a result of which the lightning was ordered to destroy it. Oh, okay. Now that's, a, that's, a, that's a different. Um, that's a that's completely very honest of you, James. Different uh, story. Very, very honest. What, when was that? Only was that's the point. That, that honesty was, was the point. I didn't get the date, but it was during the Cold War. <laughs> point for honesty. I have actually read that as well. Yeah. yeah. Point, point for honesty. Yeah, point for honesty, you'd think. What? So, no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Point I'm joking. just being a good person. <laughs> I, I, I am joking. We do have a, a two-way tie between Roy Wait, and Let's take it into the, James. the final quiz of the... Whoever nearest the ball well, type question. Would you like to know, what about the rate of climb of the lightning? Oh, God. Well, that's unfair, isn't it? Because he is a pilot and 
He's not yet quite a pirate. Well, I'll go second then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you're going to have to take it into the next quiz. Yeah. All right. It's, well, the next quiz is going to be the Christmas quiz. Um, and okay, we can do that. We can do that. Doesn't mean I still can't win the next quiz. No, it just let's means take that... all the points. Yeah, the next all right, quiz. right. Ooh. Okay, well, if this we can like remember. How would our listener? <laughs> how would our listener cope with this? <laughs> this is this is the jeopardy thing we're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This is how you get a TV important. series commission. Yeah, nothing gets made unless it's got jeopardy. There we are. So James two, Roy two, Jez one. That we carried on into the final quiz oh, of the year, the oh, Christmas God. quiz, which is our Ask James Christmas special. Mm. We need Ask James questions. Yes, Prize please, for the please best we do. questions. Yeah, we do. Great chaps. Thank you for another really, really enjoyable podcast. And don't forget, everybody, you'll be able to hear our full-length interview with Graham Williams in full flaps, which drops a week after this episode first airs. So depending on when you're listening to this, it might be there right now. And coming up, as I was saying, as we edge towards the festive season, we're going to make our Christmas edition and Ask and James and special. have got their lights up already, by the way. Who? And next to neighbours. That's a disgrace. The, well, we're recording this on the 16th of November. Yeah. And they've got their full house Christmas lights up. I salute them. I'm appalled. You've normally got your, into your second Christmas tree by now, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Second Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, too, it's too soon. <laughs> too soon. But um, in our Christmas episode, which won't be too soon, we'll also be hearing from the brand new leader of the RAF Red Arrows, squadron leader Tom Bold. Uh, a really great way, I think, to um, end an odd year and look forward to a new start for everybody in 2021. Don't you think? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Vaccines. Yes, hurrah! <laughs> and remember, you can still listen to all our earlier podcasts from Series 1 and Series 2, wherever it is you get your podcasts. Do let us know anything or anyone you'd like us to feature. We'll try and make it happen. And you can keep in touch with us, of course, on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, at Top Landing Gear. And as Roy was saying, please, please email us with your comments and questions for our Christmas special with our aviation expert, James Carter. <laughs> 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 It ruins all my credibility. <laughs> I know you've done that on your own. Don't you worry. Uh, our email address, of course, is info at toplandinggear.com. That's info at toplandinggear.com. Two G's. Two G's. Oh, two G's. And however you're listening to us, please recommend us to your friends and family and do leave us a review, especially if you've enjoyed it. In the meantime, thank you so much for listening and bye for now. This is Top Landing Gear.